Believe it or not, the complexity of the calculation that we need to come up with here, the formula that needs to calculate this for us, is not all that great. But it does involve using two new functions, count a and count if. Now I'm going to go ahead and show you the, the formula that actually works. And it looks like a pretty, you know, it looks like a doozy. But again, it's not all that difficult. And I'm going to explain everything, how it works and why it works. But before we do that, let's go ahead and create a new sheet, just a blank workbook. And I want to show you kind of a lower level instance of how we get this to work, how it you know, goes about, what the result it gives us, and then we'll bring that into the, the main formula. Count if, well, let's go ahead and get some sample data on here first. Sample one, and I'll click and drag that down. And Excel automatically enumerates that for me. So we've got samples 1 through 12. And I'm going to go ahead and delete that one right there. So I've got 9 got deleted. That means if we were to look at this range, there are really 11 values. Okay, because one of them got deleted in the middle. So let's take a look at count A first equals count A and opening parenthesis. We're going to go ahead and click and drag this entire range and then closing parenthesis. And that's what count A shows us, 11. Count A determines the number of non-blank cells within a range. That's its purpose. So let's delete this one and now we've got 10. The more we delete smaller number that's going to get. And if you were to, you know, if you don't trust it, just pause the video and count. Or better yet, I'll count with you. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So count A looks at the list here and it determines what is not blank and gives us the result. And I will put right here count A so we know that that's what it does. Now let's add another test, test, and test. Now count A gives us the full 12, right? Let's do count if. Count if is a little bit different. Count if, and you can see there, counts the number of cells within a range that meet the given condition. So check this out. Opening parenthesis, let's specify our range. And now what, put a comma there, what is our condition? Well, I want to find any instance of the word test and count those. And there we go. We've got a three. And how many tests do we have in that range? Three. That's right. If I add another one, now we've got four. So count A counts non-empty cells. And count if counts cells that match a specific criteria. Now watch this. This is a little bit of a twist. What if I wanted to count all of the cells that are not test? That's a little bit different. In that case, we want to put our quote here. And less than, greater than. This is the not equal that's the way we reference something as being not equal. And then surround our string with an asterisk on either end. Okay, so what we're saying in this, the double quotes are passing the whole parameter not equal to test. So that will tell us the result of any of the cells in this range that are not test. And if I go through here and delete this one, you can see both the numbers are going to change. Now, what if I wanted to find all of the cells that are not equal to test and that are not blank? Because you can see here that as I delete these cells, count if is counting the blank cells as, you know, they're, okay, they're not test, so it's going to go ahead and count them. Well, in that case, we would combine the two. Count A and count if. 
Okay, we've got an equal sign, and we're going to do count A. We'll specify that range. Okay, go ahead and close that off. And then we need to subtract, and I'm going to go ahead and put this in a parenthesis just to kind of group it. We can use parenthesis to group things so that uh, not only do we ensure the order that they get executed, but it also helps us visually to kind of keep things together. Count if, we're going to again specify the same range. And what I'll do this time is I'll say if it does equal test, we want to get rid of that. So now we're counting the number of cells that do equal test, and we're subtracting that from the number of cells that are not blank. And that gives us 8. So what we have done is counted again all of the cells, found out which ones are blank, and only counted the ones that are not blank. And then from that number, which in this case, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and that's the result that we get here, but then we subtracted, we went through that same range, and we subtracted the number of cells that have the word test in them. That gives us a total of 8, because there is only one. But if I add another one, now we've got a total of 10, but two of them are test. So this is still an 8. If we got rid of this one, then we can see that number start to drop. So one more time, count A searches through a range and it returns the number of cells that are not empty. Count if searches through a range and it returns a number of cells that match a specific criteria. And then we can use them both together if we want cells uh, you know, that are not a specific criteria and are not empty. So let's take this information and we'll go back to, I'll go ahead and not save that. We'll go back to our existing project and we'll see how we can implement that in a real world scenario.